Meet our think tank. They've answered hundreds of general knowledge questions before the show. Their answers are in. But how helpful will they be to the three contestants? Playing the game are Amelia, a manager for an arts development organisation from Newcastle, Wilson, a self-employed window cleaner from Hamilton, and Catherine, an asbestos contract officer from Doncaster. This is Think Tank. Welcome, as ever, to our think tank. How are we, guys? We're fabulous. Good. 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 In the pack, we have a professional ice hockey player, a male model, a self-confessed adrenaline junkie, and someone who's lived in Canada and Holland. And that's just Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He can do the whole show on his own. The think tank are here to help out our three contestants during the show as they battle it out to win a cash prize. So welcome to you all. Amelia, you're a manager with an arts development organisation, so... Theatre, literature, cinema, all comes naturally to you, does it? Uh, hopefully, but if there's any questions on those, I'm hoping it's going to go my way. Otherwise, <laughs> it's going to be pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Musically, though, do, do you play musical instruments? I've just started to learn the steel pan, which is fantastic. It's a really, really great instrument to learn in a group, and it's not a very steep learning curve, so you can get playing a song after about an hour. So it's The easy. steel pan is like the, the steel drum? It's the same thing, yeah. OK. Not the saucepan, the steel pan. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So what are you good at? I'm hoping there's going to be some questions on geography and movies, some modern pop culture. <laughs> OK, fair range then. And Wilson, welcome. You have a window cleaning business. Yes, I do in Hamilton, Lanarkshire, yes. Still climbing the ladders yourself? No, no. Long gone are those days. You know, I've got young legs and young bodies that do that work for me. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> you just stand at the bottom and tell them to get yeah, on with it. Yes, exactly. Hamilton, of course, home to the academicals. The academicals, yes. Affectionately known as the Ackies. Man and boy, since I was seven years old, I've supported them. What do you think your strongest subjects are then? Oh, definitely. Um, 60s pop music. Uh, um, you know, I'm a great fan of the Beatles. Saw them twice. Didn't hear them, but I saw them twice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when there's all those girls screaming. Yeah. What are you not so good at then? Politics. Politics. Jackie, you can help me with the politics, can't you? Yeah, quite interested in politics. So good girl. Some things I know. All right, so maybe you two can work together on that. You bet. Catherine, welcome Hello. to the programme. You're an asbestos contracts officer. What's that involve? I remove any asbestos for any building works that needs to be done. Special interests? Uh, I did a course in millinery. There's nothing quite as scary as fitting a hat for the mother of the bride. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> ooh. And speaking of scary things, you have another interest, don't you? I do, yeah. I have a bit of an obsession with zombies. Well, I wonder if you'll be able to spot any of them here. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> OK. All right, well, welcome to all three of you. Now, over three rounds, our contestants will try to tap into the knowledge of the think tank to build up as much money as possible. The two high scorers go through to the final. Ultimately, though, just one will walk away with a cash prize. So, let's play the first round. In this round, I'm going to ask you a question and then every member of the think tank will reveal their answer that they gave before the show. The correct answer is always going to be there somewhere, but there could be any number of mistakes in the mix too. So pick out the correct answer. £200 goes into your cash prize fund. You get two questions each. Amelia, you're up first. So here's a question we asked the think tank. Which woman was named Time Magazine's Person of the Year in 2015? So, take a moment to think about it while we have a look at the answers that the Think Tank gave. Kicking off with Anisha. Caitlin Jenner. Angelina Jolie. Hillary Clinton. Angelina Jolie. Angela Merkel. Angela Merkel. Angela Merkel. Angelina Jolie. So, Angela Merkel or Angelina Jolie, but one, two others, Caitlyn Jenner and Hillary Clinton. Got any thoughts? Some might say they're all worthy winners. Um, Angelina Jolie last year was quite high profile with her UN ambassador role and um, highlighting various female cancer issues. However, some of the think tankers have chosen political figures, so it's a tough one. I'm going to go with Angelina Jolie as a guess. OK. Which woman was named Time Magazine's Person of the Year in 2015? You're going to guess with Angelina Jolie. Let's see if you're right. Angela Merkel oh. Oh, was, in fact. <laughs> so, uh, no money for you that time, but there are plenty more chances to, to get ahead. Wilson, you've seen how it works. Let's see your question. Who sang the opening line of the original Band-Aid single? 
you're a music fan, you might be across this. Let's see what the think tank thought. Anisha. Bono. Bob Galdoff. Minch Ewer. John Lang. Bob Geldof. Paul Young. Bono. Bob Geldof. Bob Geldof, the most popular choice there, Wilson. Do you remember it? I do. I do indeed. Um, and the harrowing pictures, you know, for why they were doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a stab here and go for Bono. Going to go for Bono? Yep. OK. Let's see if you're right. Who sang the opening line of the original Band-Aid single? And the answer is... Paul Young. Oh. Oh. Paul Young, it was indeed. Can you remember how it goes? Yes, I yes. had it right. It's Christmas time. <laughs> and there's no need to be afraid. That's why they got Paul Young to sing it. OK. Yeah. I'm just intrigued, Tristan, John Lang. I didn't know the answer to that. I just took a wild guess. Do you know any singers called John Lang? No, I don't. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, just a wild guess. That's okay. Yeah. All right. So no money for you either there, Wilson. Okay. But uh, lots of time. Okay, Catherine, let's see your question. What does the A stand for in the sporting abbreviation MMA? Have a think and let's consult the think tank. Amnesia. Association. Arts. Arts. Athletics. Athletics. Arts. Arts. So, lots of votes for arts. Does that sway you at all? Um, I was already thinking mixed martial arts mm. before the think tankers gave their answer. And obviously, Tristan's a sportsman, so I'm going to go with arts. Well, that's, that's a canny observation there. <laughs> what does the A stand for in the sporting abbreviation MMA? Catherine says arts. Is she right? Yes, she is. Yay. Well done indeed. Yay! <laughs> it is indeed mixed martial arts, so well done. £200 goes into your prize fund for that correct answer. All right, coming back to Amelia, let's have a look at your second question. In the Back to the Future films, Marty McFly travels in time in what make of car? You're looking like you know what it's going to be. But let's just consult the think tank for a second, shall we? Ford. DeLorean. DeLorean. Chrysler. Ford. DeLorean. DeLorean. Ford. So you've got at least half of the think tank going for DeLorean, the three Fords and a Chrysler. What do you reckon, Amelia? As much as I'd like to see the film where he flies back in the future in a Ford, I have to go with the DeLorean. <laughs> it's a very special car, I suppose, lovely, wasn't it? Lovely doors, yeah. Lovely doors. OK, <laughs> let's see if your lovely doors are going to get you £200. In the Back to the Future films, Marty McFly travels in time in what make of car? It's a DeLorean. <laughs> Well done. So that gets you up and running, Amelia. So, Wilson, your second question. King. What animal with the Latin name castor is the national animal of Canada? Hmm. Might give you pause for thought. <laughs> oh, sorry. Pause. Oh. Think tank. Oh. Oh. Bear. Beaver. Bear. Bear. Porcupine. Bear. Beaver. It was a horse. Four bears, two beavers, a porcupine and a horse. You've got a veritable zoo to choose from there. <laughs> I lived in Toronto, Canada. So, slight advantage here. And if I get it wrong, I've got two sisters out there who will disown me. OK. <laughs> so, with that in mind, it's that little beaver. What animal with the Latin name Castor is the national animal of Canada? Wilson's saying it's the beaver with... Certain confidence. Is he right? He is indeed. Oh. Beaver is the correct answer. Thank you. Thank you. Tristan, you spent a fair amount of time in Canada, haven't you? Yes, a lot of time. What happened there? Uh, I played ice hockey across there. I've lived in uh, Nova Scotia, Alberta, BC, mainly just playing ice hockey all over, yeah. But you never came across the national animal? No, I didn't. I thought it was a bear. I think I was just being, in, I've been camping too much in the wild, so I'm too <laughs> familiar with bears. OK, all right. <laughs> So there you are. Oh, Wilson, you have £200 for your prize fund. We move Excellent. on to Catherine for your second question. Here we go. What is the profession of the literary character George Smiley? Have a think about that while we see what the think tank said. Orthodontist. Dentist. Policeman. 
Artist. Spy. 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 Detective. Some interesting answers there to choose from. George Smiley, does he uh, ring any bells? No, he doesn't bells ring any bells. Um, but I think I'm going to go with Spy. I think that it's probably a, an older character, and I think that Len would know the answer. Oh. oh, OK. What is the profession of the literary character George Smiley? Catherine's going with Len and a couple of you with Spy. Let's see if she's right. She is indeed Spy. <laughs> The lead character in John Le Carre's novel, Tinker Tailor, Soldier right. Spy, and Smiley's People, of course, so that was well done. Mm -hmm. A couple of interesting answers there from the tank. Anisha, yeah. orthodontist. Yeah, definitely <laughs> makes sense, right? Smiley, yeah. teeth, <laughs> orthodontist, <laughs> uh. Yeah, absolutely. Here we go. Okay, so well done, Catherine. That's £200 you. in your prize fund. And at the end of the first round, let's take a look at how people are getting on. Currently, Amelia and Wilson are tied on £200, but in the lead is Catherine with £400. <laughs> that could all change, of course, in our next round. Every member of the Think Tank is holding two questions which they answered correctly before the show. So you'll take it in turns to pick someone from the Think Tank whose knowledge you think you can match. And for every correct answer, another £200 is added to your prize fund. OK. Once a Think Tanker has asked both of their questions, though, they can't be picked again. OK? Amelia. You get to go first. You've got the entire crew to choose from. <laughs> so, whose knowledge do you think you can match? Um, I think Len and I have answered a few questions correctly, so I'm going to choose Len. Well, I've seen this guy in Hollywood. <laughs> Tremendous show it was. Right, here's my question. Which hit single by Barry Manilow shared his name with the Brazilian beach and a New York nightclub? Which hit single by Barry Manilow shares its name with a Brazilian beach and a New York nightclub? I think, and this will be my mother's musical taste, it's Copacabana. OK. You're saying Copacabana. Is she right? It is Copacabana. Well done. Oh, <laughs> £200 to Amelia. Well done. Wilson, then. Mm -hmm. Who do you want to choose? She's giving me a wry smile as we look. <laughs> there, and she's twinkling her eyes now. <laughs> Diane. Are you going to do him a favour by asking him a question he can answer? He is definitely going to answer this. Oh. Who has scored more league goals for Arsenal Football Club than any other male player? So, if it was Scottish football, you'd have the answer, doubtless. <laughs> A very well-spoken chap now commentating, and I'm going for Thierry Henry. Well, he knows his football north of the border. Does he know it in London? What's the answer? He's correct. Mm -hmm. Thierry you. Henry, well done. Well done. <laughs> So Thierry Henry scored 175 goals in total. Yes. Not one game, by the way. Not in one game. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> OK. Well done, Wilson. That's £200 added to your running total. Catherine, you are up next. Still got the full tank to mm. ask. I think I'm going to go for Peter. It's my father's name, so I'm hoping a bit of family luck. This is a film's question. Which type of creature is Sven in the Disney film Frozen? Which type of creature is Sven in the Disney film Frozen? Have you seen Frozen? I have, yes. And I think Sven is the reindeer. Sven, you think, is a reindeer. Is she right, Peter? She is correct. He's a reindeer! Yay! Well done. <laughs> well done to you. That's £200 added to your running total. So you're all doing very well in this round so far. Amelia, let's get to your second question. You can still ask anybody you like from the think tank. I think Max also got the DeLorean question right, so I'm going to go with Max. Ah, oh, very good. Well, it's another American culture question. Uh, and I know this because I travelled through Texas and it is a great place. So, in March 1836, the Alamo in Texas fell to the army of which country? The Alamo in Texas fell to the army of which country? I'm going to guess because it's next door and say Mexico. So you're going to go with Mexico? Yeah. Well, is she right? Well, it is a next-door country and it's not Canada, so it is Mexico. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Good calculated guess. And you get to add another £200 to your total. So, Wilson, your second question. Who do you want to choose? Such an unusual name. 
Armanel. Ah. And you look a little bit lonely back there, so. Oh, thank He's you asking you out of the me, kindness yeah. of his heart. Oh, I'll keep oh, on oh. Men behave. <laughs> <laughs> right then. So, I'm all yours. So, it's a dating question. I met my husband through the back pages of Time Out. I answered his ad, which said, man on shelf seeks nice woman to dust him off and see if he's the type of bric-a-brac she'd like to have around. <laughs> and I just thought it was great. And it is. What does the H stand for in the dating abbreviation G-S-O-H? What does the H stand for in <sighs> E-S-O-H, Wilson? Well, if I ever lose my sense of this, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be lost to the world. A sense of humour. Is he having a laugh? <laughs> 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 if he was, he would be completely correct. It stands for humour. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> So H stands for good sense of humour. So well done, Wilson. There's two hundred pounds into your prize fund, and that brings us on to Catherine for your second question. I think you can still ask the full range of encyclopedic wisdom that we have on show here. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go with Tristan this time and hope that it's not a sport question. So please be kind. Oh, I'm sorry to disappoint <laughs> you. It is a sport question. Uh, if you know ice hockey, you would know this 100%. So, uh, here we go. Which Canadian ice hockey player was nicknamed the Great One? Who was the Great One in Canadian ice hockey? Have you ever been to an ice hockey game? Uh, no. Okay. Not at all, even though the Steelers are quite close. I've <laughs> not been to see them, and I couldn't even hazard a guess at the name of a Canadian ice hockey player. <laughs> not one? Not one. Rather than say nothing at all, there's a million to one chance that you might get it right. <laughs> Just pick two names. Pick a first name, pick a last name, and you never know. Peter Steele. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Peter Steele is a great name for an ice hockey player, isn't it? Was he known as the great one? It was a great name, but unfortunately the name is Wayne Gretzky. Oh. Oh. Wayne Gretzky was the answer. And he's the leading scorer in NHL history. Do you know how many goals he scored? It was over 500. More than 500 goals, so he really was a great one. Yeah. Sadly, though, uh, that means that you stay on your current total. So, back to you, Amelia, for your third and final question in this round. I'm going to go back to Tristan, I think, in the hope that it's not another sport question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a, it's a movie question. We like our movies. In which film does Ben Stiller star as a gym owner, White Goodman? Ben Stiller is the gym owner, White Goodman, in which film? I think... And I only think I know this because I used to be an instructor for it. And it's dodgeball. Dodgeball? You With the five you D's dodgeball. of dodgeball. Really? Yes. All right. Dodgeball is your answer. Is she uh, on target there? Yep. That a girl. Way to go. <laughs> dodgeball, well <laughs> done. You. £200 goes into your kitty. And we yep. move on to Wilson for your third question. Tristan, though, you cannot ask. I think this time around, and I'm looking straight at you, Len. <laughs> we shared the same hairstyle almost. <laughs> all of you. Glasses, and um, I like your shirt too. Right, this is one of my favourite TV programmes. This is about now. Black Adam the Second. Oh. Who played the role of Lord Flashart in the TV comedy series Black Adder the Second? Lord Flashart in Black Adder Two. Who was that? I've watched them all, all the series, but it's been so long. Ed Edmondson. Aid Edmondson, is he right? I'm sorry, Rick Mail. Rick Mail. It was Rick Mail, the late Rick Mail, of course. Yes. He and Aid Edmondson worked together, actually. Correct. Quite a lot, yeah. but uh, sadly, that was not the right role. No more goes into your prize fund. I don't like we'll your shirt, <laughs> We move on to... No points for that, though. We'll move on to Catherine. <laughs> so, Catherine, we come to your last question, and you can't ask Len anymore, and you can't ask Tristan. Right, I'm going to go with Jackie. Nobody's asked you yet, so we'll see what questions come up. Well, I was glad when I got this question. <laughs> Which former Coronation Street actress played the role of policewoman Catherine Kaywood in the TV drama series Happy Valley? Have you seen Coronation Street much? No. Have you seen Happy Valley? No. OK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I can feel another Wayne Gretzky moment coming here. <laughs> yeah. So, what are you going to do? The only person I can think of is probably from EastEnders. I'm going to go with Martin McCutcheon. <laughs> Martin McCutcheon is what you're saying. Which former Coronation Street actress played Catherine Kaywood in the TV drama Happy Valley? Was it Martine McCutcheon? Wasn't. No, it was Sarah Lancashire. Sarah Lancashire, it oh, was indeed. Yes. So, Sarah Lancashire, of course, played Raquel in Corrie from uh, 1991 to 1996. I'm afraid you don't get to add anything to your total either. 
So at the end of the second round, let's have a look and see how your prize funds have changed. Wilson and Catherine, you both have £600 in your kitty, but currently Amelia is ahead with £800, so well done. <laughs> so, contestants, one of you is going to have to leave shortly, but there is one last chance for you to take the lead if you're running behind. All of you are going to be asked the same question. Two members of the think tank will then tell you the answer that they gave before the show, which they believe to be correct. Only one of them is going to be right, though. So if you side with the correct person, you will get an all-important £200 to add your kitty. Just five questions remain, though, before we do have to say goodbye to one of you, so choose your answers carefully. So first, we're going to hear answers from Peter and to Diane. And here's your question. According to the World Health Organization, which creature is responsible for more human deaths each year than any other? So, Peter, what do you reckon? Uh, the mosquito. You love these hand gestures, don't you? <laughs> do. Mosquito. OK. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying mosquito, Diane? I believe it's a rat. A there rat. There are probably more rats than humans in the world, responsible for the bubonic plague, killed a lot of people there. And they do say you're never more than what? Uh, ten never more, yeah, about ten feet from a rat, which is probably... <laughs> oh, look! <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So your choices are rat or mosquito. Lock in your answers, please. So, Amelia and uh, Wilson have gone for Mosquito and Catherine too. You've all gone for the same answer. Let's see if you're right. Yeah. Mosquito! Oh. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done, Peter. Fantastic impression. So you'll get £200 added to your prize fund. And we move on to our next answers, this time from Len and Anisha. Here's the question. What was the most watched sporting event of 2015 in terms of UK TV viewers. Len, what's your answer? The Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. OK. Anisha? I said the Rugby Union World Cup. All right, then. Yeah. So you have the Rugby Union World Cup or the Super Bowl, which was the most watched event by UK TV viewers. Please lock in your answers. So we've got Amelia and Wilson with the Rugby Union World Cup. Catherine's plump for the Super Bowl. Who's going to be right? Let's see. It's the Rugby Union World Cup. Well done indeed. More than 10 million people watched the opening ceremony, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. Anisha, well done. I'm surprised, Len. There's a lot of Americans love it, don't they? Not okay. 10 million of them. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting close, we're getting close. Good effort, anyway. And that means, uh, Amelia and Wilson, you add £200 to your prize fund. Next up, then, we come to think tankers Max and Arminel. Here's your question. According to 2014 figures, which country consumes the most beer in the world per capita? So that's a lot of countries to choose from, isn't it, Max? Well, Bill, I went straight in for Germany. I mean, we know about Oktoberfest, obviously, and the last time I went to Berlin, I left with a pretty apocalyptic hangover, so I feel like I <laughs> contributed to that Was that in 2014 in when you went? Absolutely it was. Well, that so would be go. part of it, then, possibly. Arminel? Well... I think it's the Czech Republic because my father's Austrian, but I had a Czech maiden name because of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. So my maiden name was Sebesta, which is a Czech name. My ancestors came from Czeske Budiovice, which was known as Budweiss, Budweiser, Pilsen. That's also in the Czech Republic. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a no-brainer. It's the Czech Republic. OK, so it's <laughs> either Germany because Max got an almighty hangover there. <laughs> <laughs> or it's the Czech Republic, because Arminella has her roots in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. <laughs> OK? <laughs> Difficult choice, but contestants, <laughs> please lock in your answers. So, Amelia's gone for the Czech Republic. Wilson and Catherine going for Germany. Let's see who's right. It's the Czech Republic, oh, Amelia, oh, well done. Bye bye, St. Hilton. Delicious beers all round. <laughs> the Czechs drink more than 143 litres per person mm. per year. Yeah. That's more than Max could manage in <laughs> a <laughs> month of October. <laughs> <laughs> or an afternoon. You need to go to Prague, Max. <laughs> That's your next place. Exactly. Well, well done, Alvin <laughs> Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Amelia, you get £200 more pounds in your prize fund. We've got two more questions for you. Let's uh, get answers from Jackie and Diane. Here's your question. According to the Internet Movie Database, as of December 2015, which EastEnders character has appeared in the most 
episodes. Jackie, a big EastEnders fan? No, I don't watch it, but if I think about EastEnders, and I did watch it in the beginning, if I think about EastEnders, the person I always think about is Doc Cotton. OK. Doc Cotton's, like, kind of iconic, I think, for EastEnders, so Doc Cotton. Well, she's been on the programme a long time, as have a lot of other characters, though, Diane. That's right. Well, I believe it's Phil Mitchell. He was there at the very beginning. He's ruined so many people's lives doing these things, coming back, and I believe that it's Phil. So your choice is Phil Mitchell or Dot Cotton. Contestants, please lock in your answers. So all three of you have gone with Dot Cotton. Phil Mitchell not getting a look in. Let's see if you're right. And you're not. <gasps> it's Phil Mitchell. Sorry. <laughs> Phil Mitchell. <laughs> Phil Mitchell's character, more than 2,600 episodes. Mm, yeah. Yeah, he's so always there. He's always like a there, causing tennis. trouble. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right, well done, okay, Diane. Thank you. thank you. So, none of you got that right, so no money added to your prize funds. For our final question in this round, then we're going to hear answers from Anisha and Tristan. And here is the last question Which poet is often credited with writing the lyrics of the song Old Lang Syne? Anisha. Okay, so I went for William Shakespeare because it sounds like Old English, and he was around a long time ago when. Old English was new English, but it's now old because it was a long time ago. So William Shakespeare, thought I went for. Tristan. I'm going to go for a famous poet, a Scottish poet, Robert Burns. And uh, I think that's the correct answer. OK. So it's either Old English with Shakespeare or something Old Scottish with Robert Burns. Contestants, please lock in your answers. And all three of you have come up with Robert Burns. So very confident there. Let's see if you're right. You are indeed. Robert yes. Burns is the answer. Woo! <laughs> Tristan, well done with that answer. Thank you. Do you know the words? How's it go? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Help me out. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought And he's run out of words. <laughs> oh, Tristan. Look at them over there. Old acquaintance be forgot for the sake of old Lang Syne. Well done. Well done, Tristan. Well done. Thank you. So you all get to add £200 to your prize fund, so well done, and that's the correct answer. So, contestants, you've run out of time now to boost your prize funds. Let's take a look at your totals in the lead. Amelia with £1,600, followed by Wilson with £1,200, and with just £1,000 in third place, it's Catherine. So with the lowest sum in your kitty, I'm afraid, Catherine, we have to say goodbye to you. Thanks very much for playing. Have you enjoyed it? I have, yeah. Good. Been very good. Good. Enjoy meeting Think Tank. <laughs> and I'm sure they've enjoyed meeting you too. So well. Done. Yes, we are. Amelia and Wilson, well done. You will now compete against each other to take home the money that you've earned in the final. <laughs> Amelia, if you win, then how are you going to spend the cash? Well, I've always wanted to go on a Wild West cowboy holiday in Colorado. So if I won the money, that would go towards paying for that. Yeah, sounds very exciting. You've got some travel plans in mind, Wilson? I've got a hankering to go to Vietnam, Japan, Far Eastern countries, and then I have a niece in Australia who's doing very well and I haven't seen her in 10 years. I'd love to go. All right. Well, good luck to both of you. Our final is a general knowledge battle. I'm going to ask you five questions each, and whoever gives the most correct answers then takes home the money that they've built up so far. Fortunately, the think tank is still here to help you out. <laughs> you can pick somebody to consult with before you answer the questions. Each member, though, can only be picked once. The difference in the final compared with the rest of the show, though, is that they haven't seen any of these questions before, so they are just as much in the dark as, we as you are, OK? Amelia, you built up the most money in the main game, so the final starts with you, OK? Here's your first question. The TV series Casualty is set in which fictional city? Who do you want to help you out here? Um, she's really great with soap, so I'm going to choose the lovely Diane, please. Mm, okay. She did well with Phil Mitchell earlier, of course, yeah. didn't she? OK. Have you got any ideas, any thoughts? I felt that the spin-off Holby City yeah. um, might have been a clue to it being in the city of Holby. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Holby. Holby City. You're very clear about that. We're clear. We've, we've got the connection. <laughs> OK. TV series Casualty set in which fictional city? You're saying Holby. Let's see if you're right. Holby it is indeed. Well <laughs> so, Amelia, you have one answer down. Wilson, 
Your question. Which pop star gave birth to a baby girl named Blue Ivy in 2012? I get a sense of modern pop, not necessarily your thing, so you're this going to have to look for some help here. Definitely not my forte okay. here. Who do you want? Anisha, help me here. Good <laughs> choice, because I know it. <laughs> because she's the queen and it's Beyonce. Like, you don't even need to deliberate. It's Beyonce. Just say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Beyonce. I get a sense you're going to be in trouble if you don't go with Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a stab in the dark. Is it Beyonce? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Beyonce is the answer you're giving to the question by which pop star gave birth to a baby girl named Blue Ivy in 2012. Have you got it right? You have indeed. Yeah. Beyonce, well done, Anisha. So, you're level one all. Amelia, here's your second question. Of course, you can no longer ask Diane or Anisha. According to legend, the kingdom will fall if which creatures leave the Tower of London. Who do you think can help you with this? Got a good idea, but just to confirm it, mm. I'm going to go with Arminel. Arminel. Aha, uh -huh. well, I have a good idea as yeah. well, so let's hope they're the same. Yes. I think that it's the ravens. Do we agree? We do, indeed, oh, yes. Good for that. <laughs> <laughs> no conflict. <laughs> OK, so... 100% confidence from both of you, the Ravens. The kingdom will fall if they leave the Tower of London. That's what you're saying. Are you right? You are indeed. It's the Ravens. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Two one to Amelia. Your chance to equalise here, Wilson. Here we go. Here's your second question. The Fonz was a character in which TV sitcom of the 1970s and 80s? You need some support. Who do you want to choose? Well, I know the answer, but. Um... Just to bring you into the game, Max. Which show would that be, I wonder? Happy Days. Happy <laughs> Days. All right, here again. Happy, happy Days. days. I, I think we should go with Happy Days. Happy Days is what you're going for. for the Fonz's uh, TV sitcom. Are you right? Yay. Happy Days it is indeed. Yay. We just got time for you to do your Fonz impression. Hey! <laughs> 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 So, two all, still very tight here. Amelia, your third question. The city of Fort Lauderdale is a resort in the southeast of which US state? Peter, Jackie, Tristan, or Len to choose from? I'm gonna go with Len, hoping he's done a little bit of traveling. Have you been uh, to this place, Len? Well, I've been to Las Vegas, I've been to New York. I've never been to Fort Lauderdale. OK. Oh. I'm struggling with somebody I know, so... I've got an inkling. An inkling. What, what have you got? It's in Florida. Florida. But I'm not 100% sure. If I was sitting up there, I'd, I'd, I'd take a stab at that as, as a best guess. Best guess? Yes. Yeah. OK. So you're going to say Fort Lauderdale is in Florida? Yes. OK. Let's have a look and see if you are right. This is to take the lead. You are indeed. Oh. Well done. <laughs> In the Sunshine State. So, 3-2 to you, Amelia. Well done. Wilson, here's your third question. The Tour de France winning cyclist Chris Froome was born in which country? Peter, Tristan or Jackie to choose from? Let's go with Peter. I reckon somewhere hilly, so... <laughs> 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 what country has a lot of hills in Europe, really? Hmm. You're looking for a country in Europe with hills in, Peter thinks. No, 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 no. Take a stab and say Australian. Gonna take a stab at Australia with yeah. Chris Froome. Yeah. Okay. The country of his birth, you say, is Australia. Are you right? It's Kenya. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I'm afraid it's Kenya. So, Amelia, you have the lead. Just going to your fourth question now. Which young English actor was named as GQ magazine's best dressed man for the second year running in 2016? Jackie or Tristan? Tristan's. Young and well dressed. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie is also well dressed. Looks <laughs> <laughs> gorgeous. And may yeah, I say, looking lovely. Don't backtrack. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late now. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned he was a male model, so I think he, well, I'm hoping he keeps his toe in the industry, and I'm going to go with Tristan. So I'm thinking David Gandhi. He's the first guy that comes to mind. Uh, he's been in a few movies, and he's also a top male model. David Gandhi's my, my guess. I was thinking about the guy who won the Oscar for playing Stephen Hawking, but I've forgotten his name. Oh. I can't remember him. I can't remember his name. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have to go with David Gandhi. I can't remember his name. Going with David Gandhi. Yeah. With Tristan's choice. OK. 
Let's see if uh, your faith is to be rewarded. Sadly not, oh, it's yeah. Eddie Redmayne. It's just who you thought it was, of course. Yep. You just couldn't put a, put a name to the face. Nope. So still 3-2, your chance, Wilson, to yep. pull level right. with your fourth question. In 1980, who became the first British solo female artist to have a number one album in the UK? Just Jackie to ask now. There were people around then like Lisa Stansfield and who were big then. Mm -hmm. uh, around that time. Annie Lennox. Lisa Stansfield, Annie Lennox. Any more to add to the possibles, Wilson, for you? We'll stick with the Scots and we'll go Annie Lennox. We'll go with Annie Lennox. Annie stick Lennox. with the Scots. Yeah. OK. All right. Annie Lennox, then, is your answer for the first British solo female artist to have a number one album in the UK. Are you right? It's Kate Bush. Oh. Oh. Of course, it's Kate Bush. So the score is still 3-2. And, Amelia, if you get this one right, you will be the winner, OK? This is your fifth question. No think tank is left to help you out, so you're on your own. Here we go. Which country has the longest coastline in the world? Just going to have to work this one out on your own. I know Greenland's quite big, and people usually forget that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm wondering Canada. I'm looking at Tristan. He can't help you. China. I might go with China. You're going to go with China? I'm going to guess with China. You're absolutely sure. If yep. you're right, of course, then you've won. <sighs> If you're not right, if you're wrong, then Wilson gets a chance to equalise. You're saying China is the country that has the longest coastline in the world. Let's see if you have the correct answer. It's Canada. Oh. You had it on your list. <laughs> you had it on your list. Mind. OK, that, that lets I'd, you back into it. I, I wish I had got that question. <laughs> Would you have got that right? Would you have Yes. OK. But we've got a different question for you. Correct. <laughs> this to draw level. Which is the only country to win the Eurovision Song Contest in the 1960s, the 70s, the 80s and the 90s? You need to get this right, Wilson. I realise that, yep. Because if you don't, then Amelia wins automatically. If only you had Armanel to help you, because <laughs> she's massive on Eurovision. It's true. But her lips are sealed. <laughs> There's nothing she can do for you. UK. United Kingdom, you say, won the Eurovision Song Contest in the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s. Let's see if you've got the equaliser. You have indeed. Oh. Well done. Oh. So, well done. Well remembered, Wilson. So, after five questions each, your scores are tied and we're going to go to sudden death. All the members of our think tank have been used up, so you are still on your own until we find a winner. So, Amelia... Here's your next question. The Titanic was built in which city? It's either one of two, because the one it was launched in, one it was built in, and it's Dublin or Liverpool. The museum's in Dublin, I think, or Belfast. It's got Liverpool on it. I'm going to say Liverpool. You're going for Liverpool. The Titanic built in which city? Amelia, you say it's Liverpool. Let's see what the right answer is. It's Belfast. Aww. You mentioned the museum being in Belfast. That was the clue. So I'm afraid you've got the wrong answer there, Amelia. Wilson, <laughs> this means that if you get this next question correct, you'll have won. Here we go. The US Masters Golf Tournament is played every year in which US state? You any good on golf? Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Amelia. <laughs> Augusta. You're saying it's played in the state of Augusta? Correct. US Masters Golf Tournament played every year in which state? You're saying it's Augusta. If you get this right, you will be today's winner. It's Georgia. Augusta, Georgia. Augusta's not a state. Yeah. That's like a two foot oh. putt you just missed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> oh dear, you had the answer in your head, but the wrong one yeah. popped out, I'm afraid, oh, Wilson. Dear. So you two are still neck and neck. Amelia, here's your next question. Guy Fawkes famously attempted to blow up a king with which first name? I have no idea. <laughs> Not good on history? No. I'm going to try as a guess. John? Going to go for John. Guy Fawkes famously attempted to blow up a king with which first name? Amelia, you're saying it's John. Let's see if you're right. James is the oh, answer. Charles, I go. Yeah, James. 
So, Wilson, <laughs> you have the chance to take the lead and, in fact, take today's prize if you could just get this right. In the UK, the word claret refers to wine from which French region? Are you a wine drinker? Yes. OK. Bordeaux. You're saying it's Bordeaux? Bordeaux. Say claret comes from Bordeaux. The word claret referring to wine from which French region? You say Bordeaux. If this is right, you will be today's winner. Let's see. Bordeaux is the right answer. Drink on everybody. So, cheers. Cheers, yes, yes to everyone. Well done, Wilson. You're our winner. Commiserations to Amelia. Very oh. well fought. You're so close. Thank you. But Thank afraid, you, Jane. Uh, Thank you. You're not taking anything home apart from the glory of giving Wilson such a tight contest, fighting on to the bitter end. So, well done. Correct. Wilson, as our winner, you'll definitely be taking home your prize of £1,200. And shortly, you'll have the chance to add an extra £1,000 to your winnings. First, though, shall we take a moment to congratulate the think tank who gave the most correct answers during the show? Today's top thinker is... It's Max! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Wilson, then, you've got one last chance to boost your prize money to your face. Our question, impossible. So this is the toughest question of the whole show because no-one in our think tank answered it correctly. So, Wilson, if you can achieve what none of them here could, and give us a correct answer, that extra £1,000 will be yours, OK? OK. Let's take a look, then, at your question, impossible. Which football club are known as the Chairboys? Football club known as the Chairboys. Your team known as the Ackies, of course. Let's look at what the think tankers had to say, getting the wrong answers. Chelsea, Arsenal, Real Madrid, Leeds, Charlton or Charlton Athletic or Watford. All of those are wrong. Does that help you get any closer to the answer? No. I've never heard of this one. Chair. I'm just trying to assimilate. Uh, why chair? And who makes chairs, perhaps? I'm going to go for Cheltenham. Going to go for Cheltenham? Cheltenham. The just Cheltenham chair boys. Got a certain ring to it? An alliteration? Which football club are known as the chair boys? Wilson says Cheltenham. This is for an extra thousand pounds. Is he right? No, he's not. It's Wickham Wanderers. Oh! It's Celebrate. Wickham Wanderers. Hi, Wickham, known in the old days yeah. for furniture making. Furniture, this is yeah. what I was yeah. going down the road. Wickham Wanderers, the pride of the Chilterns. They play magnificent football in League Two. How do I know that? You're a supporter. They're my club. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, so that wasn't it. Nope. Yeah, you didn't conquer the question impossible. No, nope. nope. But you're still leaving with your prize fund of £1,200. So... That'll go some way to your travel plans, won't it? Probably buy Hamilton Aki's two new players. <laughs> <laughs> well, well done, Wilson. Thanks for Thank being you again, us. Bill. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. Do join us next time when three more contestants will see whether they can bank on the think tank. Until then, it's goodbye from them. Goodbye. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Bye-bye.